Hello, everybody. Welcome to Average Andy's number five. Uh, got myself, John, again with Sindula, and special guest, uh, one of the tanks from our guild. Been in our guild for about, uh, what, six, five, six years now at this point. Um, his name's Death. Death, welcome aboard. Thanks. Five years. Five years. Five years and two months. Five yeah, three months. Joined like us that. in uh, Battle for Desire Lore, right? That's right. Okay. He's going to have, uh, we're going to ask him. To uh, just give some of his opinions on things, um, Death has been playing the game for. Why don't, you, why don't you give yourself a little background, Death? Yeah, well, I could talk for an hour about my background in the just game. Keep it brief. Anyway. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, I guess I started playing the game either right after it came out or within the first year. I don't remember exactly when. Taking breaks along the way, but um, did some like light raiding and Wrath and Cata. And then, you know, real life stuff and really raid seriously until Legion. Mm -hmm. But played I played every expansion in some way except for Burning Crusade. Because I was in college and didn't play in college really. Um and since Legion, I've played the game. Like I guess that's what, seven years now, eight years now without stopping. Wow. So that's so long ago. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. And I think death is yeah, at least actively the longest withstanding officer in the guild, right? Besides you, yeah, with that no, before. No, uh, uh, me, I, I, I super. So I supersede John, and so does Demise, because John quit. All right, man. But but who is was it? You or Demise first? Demise first. Oh, okay. So you're the second longest. Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. I thought you were before Demise, I've, but mm, I'm pretty uh, sure Demise was before no, me. No, no. I don't think so. Regardless, it was probably it was, around it was the very same around time, the very right? same time. That, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one tier, the battle for Desire Lord tier. Yeah. So it's been around for a while. So there's a lot, a lot to unpack because uh, we make these after when there's like a catalyst for us to make them. And so recently, it's been obviously killing the bosses. And we recently killed Firak, which mm. we ended at like six twenty six world ranking, uh, which is okay. It's not bad for. Well, right. I think we were basically a true two day guild this year. In the beginning, we did like heroic on Wednesdays and or Tuesdays rather yeah. that were required, not just optional. But besides that, we we stuck pretty true to the two day schedule, which honestly is probably what made the difference between our vault of the incarnates rank and this rank. Yeah. Um, but I think we all have plenty of qualms about how the last boss went and how long it took because it took us four hundred and fifty pulls, basically a little bit less. Um, but I guess the first thing we can just talk about is the tier and review and i guess john you're the gm slash raid leader um so how did you feel about all this the tier how it went what would you have liked to see and change and what were the high and lows for you yeah one thing i wanted to add about death too before we get into this is uh death plays the game or probably has more play time on the game than anyone i know and he has like 800 mounts True. and he's just one of those guys you know really just loves the yeah, game has... loves playing the game and has like you know, does all the extra bullshit that nobody else really does. Yeah, is that that casual perspective as well? Because he does all the outside end game content, or a lot of it at least. Like has all the battle pets too and stuff. It's yep. really, it's actually honestly, it's a it's admirable, a man. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's incredible. Just call me an addict. Let's get it over. Yeah, with. Come on, yeah. Man. yeah. That's that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so how do I feel about our tier? Um, probably similar to a lot of people in the guild. Uh. Really strong start, I felt, um, even up to Smolderon. I think we struggled a little on Smolderon more than we needed to. Um, Tendril, I, I I think we killed Tendril pretty like decently. I think we had a, a good good Tendril kill, but like honestly, the, the tires just kind of fell off on Firak. Um, and obviously, we can get into that later, like what kind of happened. But, um, you know, as far as me, my expectations were higher than our final goal our final accomplishment mm -hmm. that being said though um i guess it wasn't as bad as i'm probably making it out to seem i mean we did improve our ranks from last year but um you know we still i feel we still have the same kind of issues as last year on the last uh, end boss fat last few bosses and i mean i think that's just a issue that happens I mean, it's gotta happen with other guilds that raid like our hours i i this to me, like the tiers just go on so long, it's like impossible to for people to just like be able to commit to like a schedule, you know, when you're you're going like eight months, not eight months, you know what I mean, but like four months to get to the end goal. It's like obviously you're gonna have people like missing weeks and stuff, um, and I just don't know how like you get around that at like our pace that we you know kill the kill the rate, I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, it always is inevitably going to be an issue because you know people are people and they plan stuff. And even like 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 you said, if the tier is going to last four months, then obviously they're going to have to miss. Like it's just gonna happen. Someone's gonna have yeah. something either come up or have like a vacation or just something that was pre-planned, and they're gonna miss. I think the most unfortunate thing for us is that always seems to happen at the end of the boss or end tier boss, and obviously that's also the time where it's the most important to keep your roster consistent. And obviously that was a huge factor in how we performed and what went on. There, there was other things going on that also caused us, I think, to perform weaker on the bosses leading up to it. Because I think obviously up until smolder on the raid was not hard it was probably the easiest first six bosses that we've ever done yeah but you know but, like we normally struggle on like some stupid boss like for no reason i mean we still did on like council right council of dreams is yeah but even that was toughy for bad. us yeah yeah but overall i would say I, I mean i agree i think it it feels worse because it's just what could have been is always part of the perspective of how did we do this tier and we went into fire Act, i think pretty strong and Tindril didn't feel that bad. Obviously, the boss itself, everyone can have their qualms about. We spent like a whole hour talking about Tindril and what's right and wrong about it and just tuning in general. But yeah. uh, we were fine on Tindril, I think. We didn't actually perform at a pace much lower than what would have been expected of us. But then on Fire Act, we just kind of crumbled. So it's not really like we did that bad, especially considering there was no added three day for the end tier boss or whatever. But it's just because of how we had a bunch of roster consistency issues. And then also just maybe people getting apathetic to progression or whatever. We just didn't really feel like we were playing very well until the last two weeks when it just randomly felt like, you know, the last two weeks were like, why couldn't we have done that two or yeah. three weeks ago? Because we were just stuck on the same dumb mistakes for so long that we just couldn't get to P3 consistently. And that like hurt a ton. It cost us like hundreds of pulls. Yeah. Yeah. And um, going back to like, you know, people missing stuff. The problem with like people missing, it's like, it's not a, you know, it's not, it's not an issue. Like earlier in the tier, like when we're reclearing every week, like someone misses a day, it's fine. You're just like reclearing, but you know, you're spending like five weeks killing a boss, like somebody missing a week, just, you know, the reason you said we clicked on the last two weeks, and I think that agrees. It's like we just had the same twenty people the last two weeks for for the first time, you know. So yeah, I think, look, look. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, no. That's all right. Yeah, I mean, look, look, I, I to look, I totally agree with you guys about the attendance issue. I mean, I, you know, guys, I mean, that's my big thing I'm most proponent of. But I do think that we did. I look, I'm not gonna. <laughs> obviously, we would like to kill the boss, kill Farak sooner. But if you look at our total prog time, I think, I think the pull count's probably deceptive. So, yeah, yes, we probably spent more time on this. Yeah, we spent more time on this boss than Sarkareth. This boss is significantly harder than Sarkareth. Uh, Razageth, I think I'd have to check, but I bet the total prog time is probably pretty similar. Um, certainly it's less than Sylvanas, um, and certainly less, certainly, um, more than Jailer, but that, you know, that's just a different, those are different fights. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, it's hard for me to be like too upset. Yes. You can always look back to what could have been if we had had our full roster, we would have killed it a few weeks earlier, probably, but we also would have had to spend more time on the boss. Where it got nerfed because we would have been, you know, there's a million other things to talk about, and and that part of that, you know, we could talk about this later, but part of the issue there is, of course, their way they nerf it. Like, it, it it gets to the point where like you are just waiting for nerfs, and it completely changes the fight, the difficulty mm -hmm. of the fight, and there, it's almost like prog time doesn't really matter pre-nerf to a certain extent. It does, but it doesn't always. Like, you know, Scarn was a really good example of that last year, where yeah. like. Until they nerf, once they nerfed that fight, it completely changed it, and the time you spent before that was not really very helpful. Um, a little different mm -hmm. here, but anyway, my point is, I guess that you know, it's hard to get too bent out of shape when they nerf fights, and then you spend a much time, you, you don't spend a much time before the nerf, if that makes sense. So yeah, I completely agree. I, and... I yeah, I mean, I agree. Sorry to cut you off, but um, like I feel like when they nerfed uh Firac, we were like starting to see the end of phase one and i mean phase one changed a little bit but like the same basics were there and i mean i think for us i don't know if you guys agree but i feel like phase one was our like hardest phase so like why didn't those like first 150 pulls pre-nerf like click with people when they didn't really change that much about it you know it's kind of what i'm i'm saying yeah and the things i think or something i've always said is that our progression curve just doesn't look right and it's not right um, and I think a lot of that to just vent about the reality of why we underperform on bosses sometimes is like, I don't think people put enough care into looking at fights or preparing it and 
we can talk about this more because the whole premise of yeah. I think why me and John started this was because we were like, hey, it'd be fun to give our perspective on what it's like to manage a lower ranked or like average guild, so to speak, hence the average Andes. But in the beginning of this here, in the first podcast, I think we talked about how in Avarice, we just didn't do a lot of things that we could have to help us improve and play better, which was all in like preparation, like giving people resources so they're more prepared for the fight, just making it very presentable. So they can digest all that and they come into things prepared. The problem that happens a lot and why our progression curve is so spiky and we just constantly, you know, are messing up on the same mechanic and either getting stonewalled there or it's later in the fight. And then we wipe for no reason and like an easy, what should be easy part of the fight is just people don't really come prepared. And so a great example would be like on Fire Act, the cages. If the cages get messed up, it's basically a bricked pole. Um, because yeah. you're missing it's, like nox, you're missing the damage. Ch- yes, exactly. Yeah. The chances that someone who matters for what happens right after is extremely high. It's the and same you're basically general playing, problem. yes, and you're basically playing mechanic roulette where um, whoever, if people get it, who know what to do and are confident and performing the cage mechanic correctly, it's very seamless. It's not a hard mechanic. You just get through it. But the problem we have a lot is since people come into this, they have no idea what the cages even do. And so it takes until they get that mechanic for them to figure out how to do it. And so you'll be, even if we're feeling like we're progressing through phase two well, it just takes that one person who actually doesn't even actually, like they don't know how it works or are just not paying attention and they're either late to the spot or they don't break the people out and then the whole poll is breaked. And that happens like consistently. I remember the last week, uh, not the week we killed it, but the week before, for some reason we just kept wiping in phase two. And we've like, we've been in phase two for two and a half, three weeks at that point, but there's still people who are failing that mechanic. And so um, is this something even interesting to talk about, John? It's just like, I feel like we did do a lot better this yeah. year with going into it prepared, even on Fire Act and Tindril, there was, you made boss videos for that. There was just a very easy to interpret raid plan, yeah. but it didn't necessarily translate into us performing better when it mattered. And again, we still did okay, but I think that's kind of the thing that is annoying as well about just, the progression um... curve. I just compared our so I think Death said so Death, you think we did the round the same on Fire Act as we did Razageth and Sarkarath? Is that you said? Uh I think we did our prog, prog time was yeah. about the same as on Razageth if I had to guess. I I've not looked. So Razageth we did But Sarkarath was definitely faster. Ra- Razageth we did uh wait, is this us? Should be one day and something. Razageth was thirty four point five hours. Sarkareth was like 32 hours and Fire Act was 39 hours. So we basically spent two more nights worth of time on Fire Act than Razageth. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, going off this expansion, I'm sure Sylvanas was worse, but this was like the worst end boss for us, like prog time wise. It's probably the hardest out of the three. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with that. For yeah, this. I think so. Yeah, probably. That's I probably... mean, it's Sarkareth was weird because they nerfed it. Well, they're the same for Razageth, too. No, but... but Sorry, I meant Razageth, my bad. And Razageth, remember, they nerfed it... Like, when we were, like, halfway through Prague, they nerfed the shield, and... I forget, they nerfed and phase, phase 2 three, damage. Think, phase, phase 2, two like, damage. Yeah. And then they and then it indirectly got nerfed, but we killed it right after the patch, when they... they basically, the ring. Because we had, like, the aura... The ring and the, yeah. Hunter, and the Paladin aura both boosted everything hugely. So it was, like, kind of an indirect nerf. Yeah. Um, which helped us kill it. And, like, I feel like that... If they hadn't done that, it would have taken mm-hmm. us at least another night or two. To I, I agree. Probably longer, dude. We were actually getting farmed in phase two, and like they just nerfed all the damage in that uh, that phase by a lot. But yeah. yeah, I agree. If they didn't do what they did, they uh, we would probably be longer. But um, back to what you were talking about, Sindula. What what like why I think this tier was like so uh, for me like just uh, just a failure, I guess. It's like we get to. End bosses. I I like compare us with other guilds, like other six hour guilds. We get to other end bosses at like the same time basically, let's just say. And then I'm like comparing what we're doing, like pull count wise to these other guilds, and like these guilds are killing it like three weeks before us. It's like I I don't understand how that's possible. Like I'm giving it I'm like making custom videos or like hundreds of POVs out there for whatever spec you play. There's other like mythic guides like Dratnos and um, Andrew T and stuff. Uh, like we're posting raid plans. It's like, why are we killing these things like three weeks after guilds that are like around our same should be around our skill same level same skill level. I yeah I mean I, go ahead, sorry, no. no go ahead yeah go to 
I mean, I, I disagree with you guys a little bit. Like, so the attendance thing, I think, is a huge part of it. And right. we talked about that. I don't, I don't necessarily know that I agree that it's a strategy. I mean, I think there probably are some people who don't really know what's going on. Fair enough. But I also think that, frankly, I mean, I'm not a great player. I'm not going to sit here and act like I am. I'm definitely not. So, like, I have to see mechanics sometimes a couple times to, like, get them. Like, on the, just, I'm just using myself as an example. In Phase 3, like, I did a lot of prep and research into Phase 3. I, I did. I can honestly say that. I've not always done that. You know, John, you can get on my ass for not prepping sometimes. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to be honest. But, like, I actually, like, studied that a lot because I was like, okay, I want to know exactly what I need to do. And it still took, I still fucked it up, what, twice or like whatever. Like I still messed up and like, um, and it took me three or four, whatever it was the third of the, and then it was fine. But like, yeah, but then after that, it wasn't an issue, right? Right, right. My point though, is that like, so, so that's my, that's from my perspective. Like, even though I knew what to do, it took me some time. So I think part of the problem is when you have a lot of different kinds of people that maybe aren't seeing the mechanics, I think Sindula might have said this or or John, maybe you, that like with the, with the uh, cages, They've only seen it once or twice. It takes them more than once to get used to it. And they don't, it's not like they don't know what to do necessarily. It's just they can't do that plus whatever else they're trying to do at the same time. Or like with the blazes that like people just don't aren't. And this is not, a, uh, again, I'm, I'm using myself here to point out that like I'm not the best player. But there are plenty of other people that are just not the best players like me or whoever that are not going to be able to execute it once or twice after seeing it. It's going to take them a lot. Or they just routinely mess it up still because they're just not as good of a player. And I think. In our guild, you know, we talk about this. Like, we have, we do have a pretty wide spread of abilities, and that's fine. I think a lot of guilds probably do that are at our level, so I don't think that's that big a deal. I just think it's... I, I really do come back to the attendance thing because I do think that, you know, we, we're fine. We have some really good players. We have some ad, average players and some players that are on the lower end, but, like, when you swap in a lot of players back and forth, especially when your stronger players get moved around a lot for whatever reason because you have to fulfill a, min, a million yeah. mandatory buffs, and we could talk about this later, but... You know what I mean? Like I, I just, yeah. I don't know. To me, it's not. It's, 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 it's frankly a so, slow issue. I mean, so, I don't know what else to say. So, <laughs> so let me ask you this. So, um, uh, just bef- the preface, uh, preface to this. Uh, so, what do you think is harder uh, than fire or tendril as a boss? In the current condition states? Yeah, like how they are now. Well, like when we fire kill tendril, sure. when we kill tendril versus when we kill fire rack. Fire rack for sure. But I mean, if they nerf fire rack again, tendrils, tendrils probably. Uh, way easier now, and if they nerf fire rack again, we'll see. But okay, I I still think fire rack's hard for our guild. So so hold on, let me take a step back. For our guild, or for like, just for uh, just in general, I guess. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I I do feel like we got not to like, I feel like we got really lucky with our tendril pull kill. I agree. Um, I think yeah, I think it would have not been a surprise if it had taken us another at least another night or two to kill it. Um, I think we had the stars aligned for us in the pull, which is great. I'm not complaining, obviously. Um, and Firak, we didn't really get that lucky. Like, we could have killed it, like, two nights earlier if we'd gotten that yeah. god pull, yeah. um, like that, but we didn't. And sometimes you get that, and that's 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 just, like, the, the RNG of it. Like, all the right people get the mechanics, and, or, well, and you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, and we, we wouldn't, on Firak, we would have killed it the night before. Oh, yeah. As, not, not even RNG, just attendance, but yeah. we, I mean, we had a 2% or whatever it was, like, the boss was dead, and then, unfortunately, a seed blew up, and we wiped. But we were already in that like the, the kill week. We were the very rhythm. set we had the rhythm, and playing yeah. very well, and we were consistently performing. Because I took uh, the Wednesday we raided the first yeah. raid night of the week. We just instantly got to phase three, and we're there. We were just yeah. right about to just kill it. And just, it. Yeah. We had never gotten that close, and so there was just you know a bit of a mishap. But then yeah, we just couldn't. A player obviously had internet issues. We couldn't really get anyone to fill in. Even if we did, I think it was brought a lot of problems. Probably, but yeah. it we just lost all that steam, and his internet wasn't consistent. Or stable again for like an hour right. and maybe more and so we just didn't get to kill it but like to me it's, i just don't understand and you're probably right so it probably ultimately does come down to just a failure to execute in reality is what hurts us more than just like people don't know what to do um but it's just weird because i i still think there's just you can just get lucky pulls where the people who are consistent will get the mechanics and bosses are easy and that's why it's also nice we can yeah. choose who does it but then you also get the pulls where it's like you see people do some stuff and you're just like, I don't even know. Like if you did know what was going on, I cannot understand how your decision making <laughs> process made you do what you did. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, I understand there is a failure to execute. And I, I mean like, yeah, I make mistakes all the time too. Like I die a health, very healthy amount, like trying to do stupid things, but there's a difference. This is what I mean. There's a difference between like a stupid death. Cause everyone it happens to everyone. You're going to get hit by more things than you think. Yeah. And you're just going to die. That that's normal. And that's just a failure to execute. You're like maybe trying to min max or something with positioning and just it's too risky and you end up dying but 
the things I see people do sometimes is like I just don't understand how they even ended up thinking it was the correct way to like position or take like deal with the mechanic. I mean, I guess that is a failure to execute in a way, but I also think just people. I don't know. I think watching VODs is a great way and just like seeing how guilds deal with it, like very like good guilds, like top 100 guilds deal with things and how your spec is playing on it are really helpful. And I just don't even think that's like the minimal level of effort a lot of people put in. Yeah. And, and to go back to like why I asked the question of what do you think Tendril was harder, Tendril or Fire Act? Uh, so like I was saying, we got to we got to Fire Act at the same time as these other guilds and they killed them three weeks before us or whatever. We also got the tendril at the same time of them. So, like, I mean, if the bosses are equal in, like, difficulty, like, you're just chalking that up to luck that we killed it at the same time as them. Like, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, we killed all the other seven bosses up or whatever and there are before Firak at the same time as them, pretty much. You're just saying, like, we just got lucky on the first seven or they just got lucky on Firak. I, I just think, I don't know, you can't chalk all of it up to luck. No, and that's why it ended, ended out in the end, why, like, maybe we got lucky in tendril and we didn't on Firak, so it evened out. We maybe would have been lucky. That's my point. I, I know what you're, we obviously we both know what you're talking about, and I think honestly, it's just as as people say, a guide div. I think they're just better. Like they just have better players across the but board. Like, I, just, and... I just don't get it. Like how do we get there at the same time, but their players are just better? Like well, there's I, no way Luck's carrying us that far. Like I don't know. I, it. I mean, I didn't get it either. Or also how. It'll be clear it's like the guild three of our former guildmates were in, right? So just like anyone watching knows, and I'm sure they know what you're talking about, anyways. But it they just consistently i think have been even though the ranks don't show this they were always better they just always had better people because if you look at their pull counts on bosses they are like and you can't oh pull count doesn't always necessarily equate to like obviously top prog time matters too but i'm pretty yeah. sure they're just way lower on both i'm not sure what goes on with them if they like well it's not just that guild. There, there are other guilds too i look at There's yeah i know but that, that they also just think and they had like a just a, a crazy good performance on fire act this year i don't know what changed for them or what happened why they did so well but that it could be a bit of like we underperformed pretty significantly on fire act and they just played crazy on the boss and so it makes this huge discrepancy that comes out of nowhere yeah but they probably the real answer is that they probably just have consistently across the board better people which is fine i mean well, it's kind of what you have to deal with but were those people all there for their first for all their prog too probably I mean, again, yes probably. i'm sure they kept <laughs> i mean that's the that's other just problem like, that's just that's like that's why i don't know is it just an us issue this hap seems to happen on every end boss or does this happen to well other guilds, th think yeah. about this too i i know because i still talk to someone who's in that guild and that person played like three different specs two I different classes and three different specs yeah we don't really have we have people who can multi-class obviously but he was one multi-rolling which like we, we were just talking about this the other day like mel's really the only person in the guild who flips between roles any dps can take i'm sorry i'm talking about but the ability to flip from healer to dps and like Thank, be competent yeah. Yeah. is difficult because they're so different and it's hard to find someone who's like really interested in dpsing that's good who also is like yeah i also want to heal it just doesn't happen often like dps players like dps healers like to heal and besides the dodgy mechanic -y stuff, there's just not overlapping skill sets, I think, that much. So that also could play into, like, they did have people leave and miss and stuff, but they have people who can just fill that gap really easily. And I don't think we necessarily have that access to players who are as good, like, multi-role or even multi-specking, to be completely I mean, honest. I mean, those guilds all have either people who are in, who are really good at one spec and they, like, lock in, and it's never bad to play. Like, like Zoraco and Mage yeah. in our guild, like, you know, where he... he He's your mage, and he's gonna be good. And like, this doesn't matter. We either have people that are locked in on maybe not always meta specs or not always a spec you need, and that's all they can play. Um, and we have some people that can play more than one, which is good and great. You know, if you can play more than one spec or, or roll or whatever. But uh, we also have a lot of people, not a lot, but we have certainly have some people um, who can only play maybe one spec, and maybe that, like I said, that specs maybe they're maybe they're good, maybe they're not good at that one spec. But like, you know, when we have roster issues and we bring people in and out. And you, you you lose your comp efficiency. You lose people on the yep. best spec. It's just those really good guilds. I'm telling you, they either have the optimal comp or they have people that are just crazy good at something that's always meta. And then everyone else just flips around. So yeah, it's a huge yeah. part of it. It just is. Yeah, I mean, we even got lucky on fire because obviously, like our tank couldn't do it, and so we had a healer switch. But then we also were really easily, luckily, able to slot in a new like holy, holy paladin God, yeah. to switch and and that, that was fine so we even got lucky there but yeah i mean it's always a struggle especially when yeah with attendance issues on fire act too i guess it depends on who it is but especially with healers like that was a thing like healers had to miss yeah well, i guess only one time i guess maybe 
only one healer ever missed but that's like a yeah, it's such an thing, important man. role yeah. and it's such a healer fight that when that happens like it's basically a dead week and it's of no like not even saying that the people who fill are like bad or just like that much worse that it's, un it's unprogable but there's like so much poles, to learn so like yeah yeah, and it's just that's it's the hardest role on that fight for sure. Like they're the busiest on that fight without a doubt. And so when you have to switch someone in, it's just it is it's bad. It's just straight I up bad. I I part I don't know. If, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I don't know if I agree that it's a healer. Th I mean maybe, but like I also feel like that what's you have to think about is all the ancillary things of like if you have two evokers, if you have three, you have you know who's getting met the whatever the source of magic is that what it's called? Yeah. Or whatever being spatial paradox, like all 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 the other little things. Who's getting PIs? Like it, there's so many other things that all classes bring these days that like you have to re like if you take even one person and change them, whether they're a healer or or DPS, it changes the way everything else works. It changes the timings. Yeah. It changes everything. And so like I and then for Rock, like it's it's has like for me it's like very particular like for instance you know once we started pushing phase one pretty quickly once they nerfed the health i think it was and we like consistently pushed it before that after the second dream run but like while we were dodging the balls like we would always if we ever didn't it was so likely that if You're we right, didn't yeah. for whatever reason phase it at that moment like someone died because they just weren't used to it anymore which again is a skill issue for sure but at the same time like you're not, just not you, used to you're that, more like you know? yeah. right because people aren't because it's but someone dies or there's a different comp or whatever and usually that's why like you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, that's just an example. Yeah. Like, whenever you change the comp, you change the, all the other stuff. And, like, it's not just about a healer or DPS. It's the whole way everything goes. And mm -hmm. so, like, it it affects literally everyone. Yeah. You that, change one you know, thing, there's, like, a thousand a interactions game. that are and, changing. And, right. Yeah. And that's because the fights are so complicated. Yeah. That's part of the problem. We can talk about this. I'm sure we're going to get to it. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's a huge topics, problem. Yeah. 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 And I get, and we can stop doom and glooming about our performance because i think we all agree like we actually didn't do that bad in reality yeah. we didn't for a six hour guild that stuck to basically six hours all time and considering our previous ranks like it's a 200 jump over avarice obviously our goal was to get better than vaults but that just didn't i don't know didn't work out and we probably could have been a lot closer if that wednesday didn't happen i don't mean how many guilds killed it was, on wednesday maybe like or whatever 20 or 30 so yeah but still i mean that that, that helps it could have been the difference between being the 600s and 500s so yeah. at least mentally it just feels good to cross those lines but yeah i think we all agreed it was in reality not that bad but fire act just felt really bad to do because of how it all went down um but in terms of the raid itself amir Drasil, the whatever it's called how how did you guys enjoy it? I, I definitely let's start with you because you have the best takes about some of this. How was this raid compared to the previous five raids? So Shadowlands and oh Jesus, these ones. Um, you don't have to go was, through and like compare each one, but rank it, you know. make a tier list now. Go. Yeah, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, I can do it on top of my head. Of the previous, just think about those in recent history. Well, I mean, Nathria is objectively the best raid, but it was the hardest raid for our guild. So, um, oh, we're just bad. Yeah. Objectively. Objectively, Nathria was definitely the best raid of the, of the five. Anyway, um, I'm almost to a tier list. Look, I think, <laughs> I think this raid, I think it was probably the best of the three. Mm -hmm. It's close though. Like, I really like the fact that the first, uh, I like until you got to the two last two bosses, which were way too difficult and they should have been nerfed earlier. I think the rest of the the raid was good. It was the it's way it's mm -hmm. the way it should be. So I like that. Um, I did like. I think. I think. If you're going on like pure like difficulty curve, I think the previous two raids in, in Dragonflight had a better curve because, you know, it's not like you're just falling. You know, you, you basically get a little bit of harder in, in this raid, a little bit of a harder fight in Smolderon, and then you kind of just fall off a cliff for the last two fights or the hard, two hardest fights of the entire expansion. But I don't really like that, and I appreciate mm -hmm. the fact that, that the previous yeah the previous two raids, at least for our guild, um, maybe maybe maybe. Um, Vault was a little off because Broodkeeper, I guess, was probably easier than yeah, Dathia that, for us. Yeah, Actually, I don't yeah. know if that's true. Actually, I don't know if that's probably true. But anyway, similar, you see my yeah. point. Yeah, you see my point though. Like the the difficulty curve is more stable, which is nice. I do like having a steady difficulty curve if it's gonna be. I mean, Avarice was so anyway. awful. The difficulty curve. That's like right. E easy Rashok and Scarn and then Magmarax. It's like what but, are we doing here? But I mean, no, no, that that is fair. so fair enough. I probably probably would I probably take that back a little bit on Abarus. But I think the thing about Abarus is that there are a few standout really good or standout good fights. Mm -hmm. This the problem with this raid is there is no memorable really good fight. I don't like we're not because the last two fights the last two fights could be good fights if they were not so crazy hard. But the I'm I'm probably talking in circles a little bit. But my point basically is like this raid is probably the best overall, but it also doesn't have any standout bangers like. 
like Ray Shock or like Brood Keeper, yeah. for me at least. And maybe that's a tank perspective because, again, I mean, we could talk about this too, but like this raid is awful for tanks. There's nothing to do in the raid. There's nothing. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's true. So, yeah, Dog, I, uh, what do you think? I, I think I agree. It's probably the best of the three. Um, I think Smolderon is probably the best fight, maybe in the in the tier. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, like that said, it didn't have any like it, the the other it, like the, I actually agree with that. Like completely, it's probably the best raid. It had really good difficulty curve until the last two. Um, I think like Taros and like Kurok and Rashok and maybe that's it. Um, we're just like way better like fights individually than anything that um this tier had, but overall it's just probably it was like a, the best of the three. I, I like the theme of it too. I like the way the fights mm -hmm. looked. I like the like the color scheme and the last tier was like so ugly. I hated like pretty yeah. much all the fights except Rashok, I think. Like yeah. Um but yeah, I think out of I if I had to rank all three, it's Avarice and then Vault and then I'm sorry, it's Amir to Shield and Vault and Avarice last. Out of all three. Yeah. I, I probably actually think Vault was my favorite of the three. I, I think Amir Drasil is actually pretty good. And I also, I thought Fire was an awesome end boss. I think it's like paced very well. It's not too long. Just like Sarkarath wasn't really too long. Mm -hmm. And it just, I love fights that are super high tempo. And my perspective is like kind of skewed, I guess, from playing Demon Hunter. But fights where it's like uh, Fire Act, where there's a ton of like dodgy-esque mechanics, it's really fun to like navigate playing momentum and doing all that. So that kind of makes fire act probably more fun to me but i really don't like downtime in fights at all and i guess there is some on fire act. like he jumps up and disappears but then stuff happens like right away usually yeah, throughout the entire fight it, yeah. it's just a very as they say high octane fight and you're constantly <laughs> just doing you're just there's always something going on that's like fun to deal with in my opinion so i, I thought fire act was cool i also think the initial iteration of phase three is probably one of the yeah, coolest I wish end, we got to end that. boss phases yeah. like sire probably is the best end tier boss that i've done in terms of phase three and how like crazy it gets and how fun it is to try to get the rhythm down but Byrak, we would never kill it to be clear ever <laughs> no matter how many attempts we got but with the two corrupted seed spawning each time you dropped it was probably just so crazy to do mm. um, and that sounds super fun to me but the state we did it in kind of not great i still would say amir just still amir still and vault are close for me but I think Vault, the only fight I really didn't like was Dathia. I think that fight just sucked across the board. But mm -hmm. Broodkeeper, in my opinion, was probably the best like penultimate boss that they've made. Neltharian is obviously the worst Ragalon. one by far. Tindril, I still yeah. I really did like Tindril, but it's just too that was like was Tindril was them yeah. dipping back into like sepulchre esque fights, and no one liked that stuff when it happened. It was just like broke up like a ton of guilds. And if they didn't nerf Tindril significantly, it would have happened again. I, some guilds did break, like yeah. really good guilds yep. did break up yeah, on yep. Tindril. So, like, that's when the mechanic blow just gets insane on fights like that. And one thing blow, like, you just what the whole raid wipes if one person messes up, like that. Yeah, we, we could talk about that in a little bit, but. I also thought Razageth was super fun. I uh, thought that was a cool fight, too. I agree. I liked Razageth so after the nerfs. Yeah, that's no, just that's all I was going to say. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, perspective probably matters a lot too, because like phase one wasn't hard for me because I was playing Windwalker, so like the blowback didn't really yeah. ever was never an issue. And I played hey. that trinket that like rooted you in place. So well, I I'm infamous for falling asleep in phase one and Razagus. So I can't <laughs> say anything. But, yeah, like DK, but, yeah. But see, this is, it's interesting to hear you, Sindula, talk about like what you like about fights from a DPS perspective, because from a tank perspective, like it's totally different. So like to me, a good tank fight is when I have agency. Like I don't. Like I mean, a, a yes, it's all. It, Broodkeeper and Ray Shock. Like th the reason why I like those fights a lot is because I have complete agency. Yes, there's in, it's been both. They're actually the other part of it. They're both really intense. Um, uh, damn, like a uh, survival tank damage. Yeah, yeah. Yep. right. Like in both fights, you have to like really be careful with your cooldowns and plan them out and like think about them. At least as a blood decay. I mean, and, and you don't always have to do that. In this tier, there was nothing like that. Even on Farak, like I, I got to be honest, like. I'm not, I'm taking things to a preset positions more or less. Even in phase three, like, okay, I'm carrying a seed. Like, I just drop it if there's a blaze. If not, I don't really need to worry about it. I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I guess you could say there's a little bit of skill in like the gripping of the ads. Fine. There's a little bit of skill there. Yeah, fine. But like, other than that, and like, where I'm using my AMS, I guess. But if I just use it on cooldown, I'm basically fine. My yeah. point is to say, like, from a tank perspective, this was a bad tier because, um, 
It's just not. Yeah, it's just not a lot to do. Yeah. There's not a lot to do, and just kind of differently than DPS or healers, maybe. Even. I, we don't have a healer. I, I want to have agency. Like, I want to be able to control the flow of the fight. Yeah. And when my skill is like, and I'm not saying, again, this is not me saying it, it's fun. It's fun to be able to say, to react and say, okay, like on, on Broodkeeper, okay, I need to move the boss a little bit here in a slightly different angle so that mm -hmm. I can make sure I don't hit the other people and I hit still hit the eggs. Or on Ray Shock to be like, okay, let me look and see where the, the, whatever those fire things are, I need to figure out where the other one can go and make sure they don't overlap. And then I also need to make sure I'm planning my cooldowns and not dying because it does a huge spike damage. Um, so so it, those fights are fun because you have to actually think about it and it's not like the same every fight. In this tier, and we could talk about this too, the fun is all ripped out of it because the strategy is pre-planned by people that have already killed the boss and there's nothing well, left for me to do. Yeah, I mean, at our rank, that's going to happen no matter what. But well, they evolve. Right, but, but you... Right, but but if there if there's some RNG a little bit like yeah um, yeah Rishok, right, for instance, yeah, yeah I, you can at least you see my point like, yeah it's I, no, I know exactly what you're talking about yeah. I mean like even Rashad Rashad was like yeah that's a that was like a hard tank fight I don't it depends on the tank you're playing but I mean like I had to tank <laughs> that multiple times on Brewmaster and it was like it it was actually like hard because the thing about Rashad is that it wasn't static how much damage you take because sometimes you had to take two swings or one and depending on what happened you'd have to use a different cooldown and so like that kind of stuff where it actually makes you think and it's not just because a shock wasn't even i'm going to use this this and this i guess it kind of ended up being like that or you could if you like filled it external for it but at least like that moment is like pretty tense as a tank because you don't know going into it if you're like a good brewmaster like how you use diffuse is important because mm -hmm. you will not live some of the fight like those magic hits unless you diffused it right and so you and it, it would be different every pull like whether or not you had to take both or just like the one of them and so that that was cool and also there was a lot of positioning stuff in that in aberrant i'm much to our dismay honestly but like <laughs> think, like forgotten experiments with like tank clearing and stuff and then uh even like sarkarath Nelf nelfarian also yeah. very specific with tank positioning so sarkarath yeah like moving and just having the boss and the ad spawn in the correct places and stuff like that tier was and scarn obviously scarn's probably the biggest one scarn's big basically tanking the fight because yeah. if the tanks do anything wrong with like the traps just you just kind of end up yeah. yeah the whole pole gets scuffed and you basically wipe so that yeah Abra's had a ton of those and i don't think they should ever have it to that extent because it was just i feel like it just gets annoying sometimes because you're just relying on these two people to do basically Figuring perform out, the entire yeah. fight but at least having something like that is good because i told I, I think that's totally right i don't think there is a single fight in the raid where Maybe tendrils the most, but always because you're like dealing with mushrooms Whatever and stuff. Whatever you do, and... don't ask Death to soak mushrooms, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> there just wasn't a lot. I mean, but as a DPS, this tier was awesome. Yeah, there, there was a lot of really cool fights where there was like a lot of. I mean, the only opportunities for skill expression. The only bad fight the I feel like in this. The only bad fight I feel in this tier was like Council, and that's just like a mechanics cluster fuck similar to Prototype Pantheon or whatever that fight was called. And so far, but yeah, I think I really yeah, that, was, was that like ironically has like the most tanking agency of all the fights. <laughs> yeah, stop damage on pit. Interestingly enough, yeah, yeah. more yeah. damage on pit. More damage on pit. More, <laughs> more Contessa. Yeah, but all right. So I think we're all kind of on the same page as uh as the raid. Um, I guess we can shift over to the difficulty of the raids. Um, what do you think, Death? Are raids too difficult? Like, if you think so, like, what needs to change? I'm curious of your opinion on this. I feel like you're very have a strong opinion on this. Yeah, I mean, look, I think I think they're definitely too hard. So I think let me take a step back. I think there's too many. First of all, you don't need to have four raid difficulties. I don't think you get rid of LFR. I think people, there's a place for LFR. It's very popular. I don't think you need normal and heroic, and I don't think you need three like non queuable raid difficulties. I would go back to well, you can do a lot of things with mythic, but setting that aside, I would just have two. I would have normal and heroic, or heroic and mythic, or and call it far normal or whatever. Um, and I think the curve should be pretty clear. Like I think the queuable raid, whatever you call it, LFR now should probably be a little harder, but it should reward better gear. Um, and it should, you know, I think you would make sure that. Um, it, I just I don't I don't really think the game needs a story mode. I don't I don't agree with that. People say oh, LFR story modes so you can experience it. I don't get that. I don't believe in that. Like you can go back and do the raid after the tier's over if you or want. Just watch on YouTube or something. or something. Or watch it on YouTube. Like it doesn't need you should it should be queuable, but it should be harder. It's fine for them to keep like the whatever it is the determination stacks, but make the gear better so people actually want to do it. Yeah. You know, back in Legion we did LFR for tier because you had to. There was no catalyst, and like everyone did LFR for tier like on alts, and it was fine. Like it was fun. Um, outside of like kill Jade yeah. or something, I guess, but like it was fine. Um, and so then, so that's what I would do for that difficulty for the first 
non cubable difficulty normal slash heroic, I'd probably make it roughly what heroic is now, maybe a little easier. Um, I don't, again, if you want like a normal raid, you just do the cubable raid. Like, yeah. I, I don't think there's a need for that difficulty. I do think there's definitely a need and a desire for a difficulty like heroic. I would probably make it about oh, yeah. the same. Like I said, maybe, yeah, maybe a little easier. And I don't think the, I think the rewards are fine for that. Um, Mythic is way, and I would make it flex still. Mythic is very complicated because there's a lot of stuff you can do. But I, w I, I would generally say this, that, so they have the cubable raid, which should be pretty easy, but harder than, harder than it is now, so you can bump up the rewards. For the, um, the first non cubable one that's like a group, it's flex. Um, I think you should always be able to pug it. I don't, I think, maybe not the first few weeks, but I think the raid right. should be puggable for sure. On, and I think that's the way it used to be. Um, even on Heroic, you could pug it. Like, the best puggable raid that I remember since I played the game is Antorus. In Antorus, I would mm -hmm. go in there and pug um, Argus on, like, and play, like, Windwalker or something and have a blast, even though I was not good at it. Because it was just fun, and it didn't matter. And you could still do Heroic and get decent gear. Or on Feral Druid, or, like, heal it on a Holy Paladin. And, like, that was fun. And, like, people invited you, and you just ran groups because it wasn't that bad to do. That's what it should be. And, like, that should still... It should should be a rewardable thing and, an, and a fun thing to do to be able to pug raids. It shouldn't be, like, a real pain. This tier is not bad, by the way, for that. I mean, I haven't, to be completely honest, I haven't really pugged it, but I'm pretty sure the heroic is pretty easy. This tier it's like the easiest it's been in a long time. I think it was um, easy last year as well. I think Sarkar. Well, yeah, was but really wasn't Sarkar? Yeah, Sarkar's probably pretty easy on heroic. But my, yeah, so so like they've gotten better about that. To be fair to them, but I, I think it should always be about that way. If not, just maybe a touch yeah. easier. So mythic, I think I would come from the top down a little bit and say, here's how long it should take you. I think it should if you're in a two like a two day guild two or sorry yeah two day a week guild like us yeah yeah two months I think I think you should be able to kill the raid in two months and I think if it takes you longer than two months then the raid is too hard and I think that they there's a million different ways they can do whatever they want to do to make it easier they could have a and we could talk about this for forever but you could do like the ICC style where you have a debuff that goes up you could nerf it aggressively you could have a different difficulty that's like cosmetic only for like race to world first and people that are insane like a mythic plus raid or some shit i don't know you could make it flex you could drop the number of people you could get rid of raid there's a million things you could do to get to that point i think to your point about attendance i just it's tiresome like i understand that if you make it two months long that there's going to be dead time like a lot more dead time mm -hmm. and that's probably what they're afraid of and i get that but you fill that by making it more fun to play alts, and you do that by making everything easier so people have an incentive to play alts. Again, not to keep going back to it, but like in Legion, you know, I played literally every single class. And like, I didn't have a ton more time than I have now. I did have more time, but not a ton more. I played literally every class to whatever the cap was in Legion. 100? I don't even remember. 110? 10, I think, yeah. Whatever it was. I played every class to cap. Um, I did all the order halls. I did every single artifact challenge, every single one in all specs. And I did keys on like every class and I had a mm -hmm. blast and I pugged heroic on like most of them or normal. If not, I, like, it was fun. It was a ton of fun. It, yeah, it, it's highly contentious with Legion and all, but I, that I, in terms of someone who wasn't mythic rating, just being like kind of the average, like heroic, maybe dowling a bit in mythic rating is like how I did Legion. Like, I don't, I never, would never got even close to a CE, but I still had some of the most fun I've ever had playing that game, and a lot of it I honestly yeah, believe is because of how legendary acquisition worked and Titan Forging. Because right. there were so many yes. people, you would like when when Tomb was out, I was still like farming Nighthold because of Titan Forging, and also exactly there, you would also yep. kick it into legendary. So there was no reason not to go do like the easier content. But it, yeah, you would do it on a, a bunch of different classes and stuff. Like everything was so relevant. It almost that was by far in like the era of modern WoW the most like classic esque rating situation because everything was still relevant like the right. tiers before the, were so relevant you could use two sets of tiers so you had to have totally, like the old tier totally right like, all that stuff a ton of it replayability is, it is heavily ironic that the people who wanted titan forge gone are, are titan forging on are the same people who are pissed off that older like asmongold that older tier gear is still not relevant this, yep. it, it's it's highly ironic because the whole point of titan forging was that made the little, those older tiers you went back and did them uh, I like mean, you went in nighthold you went back and farm that what was it called the draft of souls yeah draft and of souls the, yeah you went back and farm that like no matter what because you could get that titan forge and it was really good so like yeah exactly so anyway i mean we could talk about this for forever john i'll let you get uh, it's just gonna say, say like but do you guys like want that like 
having to go back and do old like I when I play BC I thought that was awesome like you I go back and do Karazhan I did back like to uh, like Gruul's Lair like every week and I was like oh yeah this is sick but like now it's like if I roll a new character it's like damn I gotta go back and farm vault for you know this specific trinket well, or something I mean I think if they do yeah, that but... they need to like have like some type of like gear acquisition. Uh, it was like, so easy um, to do though like you weren't going back and doing yeah. night hold and struggling like you were going back guess, and just like yeah. slamming it and having like kind of fun just and especially exactly. on alts it just made it it also made it so much easier to gear because i'm just what i'm saying like the whole feedback loop there's just a ton of people constantly doing raid difficulties and pugging it i feel like pugging was i have no numbers or anything to know if this is true but i feel like pugging in legion was probably yep. the most active and no I, one I does an old raid now unless they're doing transmog right I, it's completely I, irrelevant it's a waste of time to do it unless you want I, like transmog I, I didn't do anything in guild until like the end of Antorus when i joined the guild and did a little mythic raiding i did literally nothing in a guild and i got like heroic clears i did i mean like i just i just pugged everything and the reason I actually the reason when I came back to the game and for Legion, I mean I had played tank before. I basically started maining tank and, and mop, but I I just got all six tanks first done in Legion was because like it was easier to put like easier to get into groups as a tank just because it's easier to you know people need tanks. Um, but like I pugged everything and had a blast. It was so much fun. In some ways, it was. I mean I really like having a group to play with and a guild and everything, and I would not trade that for anything. And we could talk about this too in a little bit, like what the point is of all this shit. But like. <laughs> I, I that was some of the most fun I've ever had in the game. Like that's why Legion was so much fun to me because there was so much to do. You could always find something to do. You could always pug on every class. It wasn't hard. Like I mean, I'm sure it was way worse at the game than I am now. I'm not good now, but like I'm sure it was a million times worse then. Um, so it was like, just fun. so like you guys wouldn't mind like um, oh we uh Lenny still needs like his mythic bow off of Razageth, we need to go kill Mythic Razageth, but as long as it's like easy, it's like you guys are fine yeah. with it. Okay. Yeah, it takes like you do it on we do it on the Tuesday after we do heroic for thirty minutes. We just go kill it and have have fun and and shoot shoot the shit while we go kill the old okay. boss. I could, I could yeah, I guess that. like when yeah. you, I can't even remember could Titan Forge could you roll the highest in any difficulty or was it like would Mythic have the highest Titan Forge roll too? I think it could. I think it was any difficulty. It was any difficulty. But yeah, exactly. But like, See, so that yeah. kind of gets around the problem that you're yeah. saying. Like you don't have to go do Mythic Razgeth. You, you just have to like, farm that. Normal and, and, Titan Forge. and I understand like oh if you're if you're switching specs that sucks. I have to go back and do or like you're kind of just behind by default. But I mean I played all of Legion. I don't think I ever played the start of a tier and I was always doing that. And to me that's that was fun. I never even mythic rated but i have like i at in legion but i probably played legion more than any other wow expansion like if you took the periods i was actually playing yeah. it i was playing the game more than i played ever since like now for me the only fun is like in the beginning you raid obviously that's the most fun content in the game to me but i think keys are fun until a certain point and it's fun and i usually just like burn out doing them after like the first month that like trying to do harder keys like push yeah. keys so to speak that's fun for me for a while but then it becomes like really apparent you kind of it's just so much easier if you have a consistent group yeah. and there's all the things that come along with having a consistent group and stuff and so i just usually end up just just doing the weeklies and being done with it until i'm fully geared but in legion like that process was just so much more engaging i feel like and it's also like, I just really miss being able to jump on an alt and go, like, pug whatever raid and just have fun doing it. I feel like I don't really have that anymore. And I have it this whole expansion. I don't know if it was because Heroic was so hard uh, compared to, like, other ones or what it was. But I just feel like it's just not that fun to... The whole alt gearing process is basically now you just spam keys and then, like, hope you eventually get the lucky trinket roll in Heroic. And it's just not it, really that fun. What it is, is, in my opinion, is the the... the the difference between the alts and the mains is so much more vast now because you have to farm crests, which is both good and bad, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So, like, the, yeah, like, the difference in Legion was that you geared up so much more slowly even on your main because you only got one. You got a chest, and maybe you got something good, maybe you didn't. Maybe a Titan Forge, maybe it didn't. And you got whatever dropped from the raid if you did it that week. There was And you got, there was, like, a raid, um, a mission table quest that gave you a raid item. But, like, and that was really important. That was, like, the most important thing because it was a guaranteed item. Um, from like mythic or whatever the highest difficulty was that you did but like because of that Sindula, you could just go on your alt and do a 10 the same as on your main and then you have a max level item that maybe titan forges in yeah. the box and yep. like yeah and bfa was like that too so like i mean different issues in bfa but the point is the same which is that like the diff the di difference between the main and the alt is much less because there's so much fewer like less gear on your main whereas now like your main is fully kitted out and so you're like well well, I don't want to play this alt play that's anymore, 40 animals right? behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play this shit anymore. Even though, like, the alt progression is still going to be faster than it was in Legion, your main is just so far ahead. 
Like yeah. that's to me is the yeah. biggest thing that's and like it's yeah, feel, and it, it, it feels it, bad. It and feels you have to get bad. the trinkets mm -hmm. and all the tier gear. It's like oh my god. It it's the quality of gearing alts. It's not in Legion. Yeah, it probably was technically harder to get to the point your alt was yeah. like even close to your main, but. It's it's that you even if you do raid if you do raid every week you still have to grind keys to get the set crest thing and also with these tiered crests you have to do like oh I need to start farming like fourteen ten to fourteens now because I need worm crests and then now I have to do the seventeen to nineteens so I need aspect crests like I don't care if it was actually harder to gear back then it was the process was way more fun because even if it's super easy to do the fact that you can't transfer crests at all after a certain point in the season different characters I think is really dumb and they should add a mechanic that allows you to transfer crest to your alts because yeah. the actual gearing process it's very easy but it's just such a boring so grind yeah. to, well, to get caught up to max item level and like i've done it multiple times yeah. every season it just sucks like it's just not fun to have so, to do these like level bands of keys to be able to upgrade gear fully it's just not a fun way to do it like just spam I'm, boring keys i'm optimistic that the warbands thing will fix this problem that they saw this and that's they just didn't Hopefully. do it for this yeah, maybe they'll do it in season four, like experiment. But like the the, the countdown gear drops or war band bound gear drops, or whatever they're calling it, I forget what the name of it is. Like that, where it's supposed to be, basically you could just pass gear to your all, so your main doesn't need. Should satisfy this problem and make it way better, and I'm really excited for that. So I just to be like optimistic about the future. Um, I'm hopeful that that will fix this issue by and large, and it'll be fun to play alts. Like, cause I, I, I mean, you guys know as much as anyone that I love my alts and like, I usually always play like all six tanks. I always have like max. And I did that. Like even in shadowlands, basically right. I've not done it. This expand. I mean, I have, I've been pretty busy this expansion, but like I have not like this tier. I have my DH and my DK both pretty high and like, like some, okay. Like I've just done some heroic clears. Like I don't like <laughs> just to drag my characters along. I haven't really done much else. Yeah. Um, because why? Yeah, I agree. And also, I guess this was this is how we ended up on a tangent from the <laughs> original question. But to go back to like just difficulty of raids, I think it all kind of ties in. It's just like the the enjoyability of the raiding experience and how accessible it is. But like for sure, the so Sepulcher they clearly took a step back. We're like, we're never gonna do that again. That was like way too hard. And it's just been since BFA this with the evolution of like the race to world first and it got so much more traction. It's because they started streaming it, obviously. So it became an actual like public event or like WoW's little esports event, I guess. Uh, and Blizzard just for no, n neither of the top guild, none of the top guilds ask for stuff to be that hard. They obviously, they want fun bosses, so you can't just make everything super cakewalk easy. But like every raid needs to be tuned like Avarice. And it, I guess Avarice was easy because it was so you got to max item level so quickly, which that's kind of supposed to be the passive buff to the character power level as the raid tier goes on. But like Avarice was perfect because even even considering Skarn and Neltharian, those were like 140 pull bosses, and those were the most miserable experiences. But at least it was brief. It's short. Yeah, I don't. And think the Sarkrath is a super like, quick boss. Yeah. I don't think any boss should and, be over like 250 pulls. Like. Yeah, an emboss maybe, but like nothing before that. They yeah, they need to stop trying to tune things or make design fights for race to world first people because, like I like Tindril would have been fine too if they instantly just gutted it. And I don't know. There's a whole series of conversations and discussions that we had about how do like the not the t world rate like world first skills like race skills think about it, but also like guilds in the probably top 100 in general also kind of like harder fights. It's like more rewarding for them when they do it, but. Nothing's going to change about Guild's positioning based on the difficulty of the raid, really. It's just, I, I don't get why they still try to make fights that are desi clearly designed to be difficult for World First guilds and, like, the top 50 guilds. And they either don't just instantly gut the mechanic that makes it extremely difficult as it happens. I just don't think they should be designing it like that in the first place. So, like, Avarice was very clean, I feel, with the mechanical demands on players. And it yeah. just felt very consistently smooth across it. And there was no boss you spent months uh, on the the only like if if echo and eltharian wasn't in that like that would just be so much just such a way better tier um like even he didn't take that long but like just the process of that fight is like more set up than anything yeah this the set i mean that's a whole separate issue right when we, i mean everyone knows we all hate i mean everyone hates those yeah. fights we had this tier so too many too but like to your point sindula like about the race to world first the problem is is that now i think i saw this somewhere and i totally agree with it 
even among the mythic raiders, the problem is it used to be like if you were like back in the day, if you were a heroic raider like in Cat or whatever, like you were the top, and like that was one whole band of player, like the just the heroic raider, right? Heroic raider. Mm -hmm. um, even within mythic raiders, you have like four different levels. You have like race to world yep. first people and like the top, yeah, like top ten guilds ish. Then you have like the the top, the hall of fame level. Yep. Then you have like our level, which is like the next, you know, five hundred to a thousand or whatever. The people that put a lot of time and effort into the game, but they're not like crazy. Yeah. And then you have people that are even a little below us, probably that still want yeah, to try to get seen. Maybe world they don't less, quite hit man. there. Right, right. They may not always quite get there. And you have four levels, I, I think, ish. And then you could argue over this, but basically four levels of people they're trying to do the same content for. And it just doesn't work. And that's the problem is that, like, we all want different things from this. The, the race to world first wants something that's really hard that they can do in 10 days. Um, the next level wants something that's a really great challenge that they can raid three or four nights a week and be done within two months. We want something that's a lot of fun. Um, we want to do well and we want to continue to get better. But, like, fun is really what we're aiming for because we're playing this shit kind of casually at we're average andes or whatever mm -hmm. um and um you know i think we could talk about how much you guys want to actually do it for but like for me that's like two months and then i'm i'm about ready to be done with it and then there's the ray below us which are, they're just trying to get better and maybe improve their play and they're just ha really just trying to have some fun maybe they have an expectation and it's really great for them when they kill a, a hard boss or maybe they get c they get really excited about that because they've never had it before and those people deserve even easier fights and so part of the problem is is that they they're doing this one difficulty where it's set for this group that's entirely different at the top that's so far removed from the group at the bottom you just can't it just fundamentally doesn't work unless you really change all the fights yeah and that's fine if they did that but they don't yeah i uh i agree i i would like for the uh, i mean i guess for us for it to be shorter like uh, that two months is fine. I think even like two and a half is good. I mean, this took what like four months, and by the time you're like spending three weeks each on tendril, three to five weeks on tendril and fire rack each, it's like uh, people are just like burnt out of it, you know. And it's like hard to keep a bench of players because it's like uh, we got very fortunate this year where we we had a good bench. We were always able to raid every day, but I'm sure mm -hmm. a lot of guilds aren't like that. Like they just have 20 people, and if someone misses, like they're just not raiding. Um, and we even had that kind of issue on the last night before we killed Firehack where, you know, we had someone with internet issues and we didn't have anyone to sub in for him. And we were just kind of like sitting around for like an hour, not doing anything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the raids are, are too hard and they definitely need to do something about it. Um, hopefully they, they take a look at it in the war within, but I, they just need to either like tune it quickly or just not make the fights for Race the World first people like to begin with uh like i don't go you go from razageth jailer to razageth like super hard fights and sarkareth it's like so easy for them it's a good fight for like our rank guilds and then back to like fire rack like i just don't get why like some like every once in a while they like, just pull one out of their asses that's really good but they just need to do that every time and then um i did like a question for both of you as far as like boss difficulty like what do you think is like a good like, what is the highest level of boss difficulty, like, you'd want to see, like, from, like, a fight? Like, what, like, obviously, like, Firak and Tendril are too hard. Like, I think Smolderon's, like, a good difficulty. Like, even bosses from, like, previous expansions. Like, what do you think, difficulty-wise, is, like, like, a good, like, I think Sires are, like, a good difficulty for an end boss? Like, something like that. Like, what do you guys think? I, yeah, I think Sire's a good one. I honestly, I think Sarkareth should be like the gold model, like the gold standard yeah. for how difficult an M boss should be. Because it was also like a pretty fun fight where you're just, just like uh, just fast the whole time, and the phases are like pretty simple to prog. It's like and dance. there's not an overblow. Yeah, and there's not like an overload of individual responsibility or mechanics that are like pass fail, one person messes up, you blow up type mechanics. And that was good. I mean, honestly. I, I don't even know when I think of like Fire Act. I think Tendrils, it's, it's a lot easier to think of like what was just too hard, just too many one shotty mechanics. Like literally, even like the seeds, the initial the initial concept of the seeds <laughs> or how it was implemented is the That's crazy, it, is dude. a terrible idea. You should there should never be a mechanic where you can only like there's sensitivity about where you can move because you hit one, you blow it up after you do it, and you have three seconds to do it. Like that mechanic should just not exist, I don't think. It's just, yes, I'm sure the World First Guilds feel great when they're doing it and finally getting it down, but it is just such a lame way because you inevitably are going to wipe to it as a normal guild, an average guild, progging it, like, multiple times. So those mechanics up. I, I honestly think just, like, Sarkarath. Like, Sarkarath was so... Yeah. The progression felt good. 
we had like i think attendance issues too well that whole tier we did it just well, we constant theme but tank on the night we it was so it. yes it was like so quick to prog through it it felt like and it just wasn't that hard of a fight but it was still fun as an end boss like that should be the approximate level they try to tune bosses yeah. to be so i totally agree on sarkareth i was gonna say the same thing and i think it's 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 i agree and we should have killed it a lot quicker like two or three weeks at least quicker we had a massive attendance issues the thing about Sarkarath that, that I just want to add to to what you guys are saying that is I think the biggest thing to take away from it is that the fights are it's not like phase one is so much harder or so awful like Farak where you're like you just wipe in phase one after four hundred pulls. Like we did probably every once in a while, but sorry, a little bit cold. Generally speaking, once we figured out phase one, if I sound lazy, sorry about that. If, once we figured out phase one on Sarkarath, like we were generally getting further in the fight. I mean, unless we had mm -hmm. attendance issues and new people in. And, like, that is why that fight feels so good is because it's balanced. And I think one thing that they really have struggled with, I think, the designers, is that the fights are not balanced. And, like, especially the infights, they need to be balanced. Like, Razageth, like, kind of the same problem, just for different players. Like, Phase 1 was, took us forever. And, we, you know, it just took us so long to get through Phase 1. And, yeah, Phase 2 was hard, too. But, like, and then Phase 3 was a joke. Like, fine. But, like... It, it shouldn't it, it just it should be it should be balanced and that's why sarkarath felt so good because it's the face all three phases are about the same difficulty maybe phase three is a little easier phase but two, i don't know yeah I don't, yeah do you think maybe they, we still wiped enough in it anyway go ahead do you think that they just like make a fight like sark and then see liquid kill it in like 120 pulls and just get like super fucking pissed off and make the next no. year like nuclear difficulty like what i the fuck? i think i think what sorry i just real quick i think what happens is two things one i do think that they i think that is a little bit what happens i also think that because it's the last boss in the expansion like the last real boss yeah. in the expansion that they want to make it harder and i also think that they since they've done this thing now but this has been a bigger problem in the past whatever four or five tiers since they've had these hidden bosses where they don't test them what happens is they panic when the the mythic first raiders get very like they're gonna sweep through the tier and like Sarkareth, I think they just didn't do enough to like make it go quick. No, they, they killed in the first reset. Yeah, they just yeah. couldn't. Do right, it. right. So like they, but like the problem is, is that they're just stealth nerf buffing. Like they just buff all the the shit out of these end bosses yeah, yeah. before the raiders get there, so they don't blow through them, and then they don't they don't make the requisite nerfs until way later, like the same level of nerfs, and they, it's just it's just not. Maybe they do eventually, but like. That that should tell you everything you need to know. That when they're stealth buffing the crap out of these in bosses, so that people don't clear the raid in five days, mm -hmm. like that should tell like, you that cares? it's badly designed <laughs> and for who. Like who cares? Like it's still yeah. like I don't I don't know if, if you guys like, and I don't care about the EU versus US thing. Like that that's not my problem. But like it's, it's let's say for example, like they got to the point where like Echo and and um whatever what are they now liquid, liquid or limit? liquid yeah liquid whatever if they're if they're in a tight race i don't care if it's in fact it's probably more fun if it's on like day four day five versus day 13 yeah it's like so like why does it need to be what they if it's just a race to see who kills it in the day four or day five like fine like i don't care like yeah. why does it have to take a week and a half it, like and it's, it's five just, days exactly it doesn't even make sense from like the event perspective either because it, like sepulcher i feel like no one was watching but obviously because it was like a three right. week long thing and no everyone loses their attention like no yeah. one wants to watch them wipe no. they want to see like cool yeah. fast-paced bosses where you're seeing like them prog it and it's like cool to watch and they get closer and closer consistently but then like they make these fights like they did sepulcher and now like even like razageth where i think they had to make a change because it was just like undoable like dathia was one too where like yeah they go into it they're so scared of them clearing it in like a week but that's what they ask for. Like, they don't want to sit at a race. It's also just way more expensive of a thing to do oh, for yeah. them if it lasts two weeks. Viewers are going to get already super bored in the beginning because it's, like, splits. And then if you, by the time progression starts, you're like, okay, I'm watching these cool bosses. Then they get, like, hard wall. Then it's like, oh, well, we're just going to have to wait till the next reset. Or they realize they're not going to be able to kill a boss. So they start doing all the boring stuff no one wants to watch. Like, even from the event perspective, we're not even talking about, like, the trickle-down effects it has on just the average Mythic player base. I just don't get it. I don't understand where they think that demand is for bosses to be extraordinarily difficult for people who are literally spending 17 hours a day progressing like that is more time in one day than 99 percent of guilds will spend in like two weeks so w what is the point of trying to tune around people doing literally everything that is humanly possible to kill stuff as quick as possible like no one cares in classic that stuff it, it's obviously old stuff but it's cleared in a day people that's like more fun to watch honestly you should have watched this like quick little yep. two hour blip of them just blowing through it and they still do cool stuff and there's like they all have their own little approaches and strats and all that but i just don't get where they feel the demand comes from to make things extraordinarily difficult for the best players in the world like it's just it's just not that kind of game like if you want like 
player versus player games just organically create competition in like harder difficulties, but like forcing it onto the PVE like situation, I just feel like is it's not fun to watch. It's the effects of it that have on us suck. And I don't even think they're asking for it. Like anything I've heard either guilds say, like the most enjoyable races for them are like either between like six to ten days. Like no one wants it to go longer than that. It's like just make it like the great push. Make it like a scalable raid difficulty. I mean, there's a million things you could do, but like people love that. And like they could just do that for this. Like just make it harder. Like, you know, make them push it or something. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Put them on. I mean, I don't really know if they would do a tournament realm. I mean, I agree that's not a bad idea, but like. I just there's so many things you could do to make a fun race like it doesn't need to be like the, starting from such a high point and I just don't no one wants it that's the thing outside of these one these few people I don't even know if they want it to be honest so like I mean Max makes plenty of money otherwise like what does he care really um I, I don't know look I, I don't know I don't know who wants it it feels crazy to me I I, I feel like there's something's gonna have to change because there's been so much people even more talking than, a lot yeah. yeah yeah there always has been for like the past few years but like i feel like this one was more than any mm -hmm. other like people for finally like really driving at home like have even like a thousand guilds even killed i was um, just checking that but then i got what's it at? lost in your guys conversation um, i can check you yeah, lost in my eyes um yes. uh, 700 see. guilds have killed fire Act. yeah so like probably a little more this, 720 i bet right so this tier is going to be over in three weeks right or four weeks probably yeah. so i mean they need to nerf it because if they want to get to like 12 1500 for an emboss like they really well, need to nerf it. you know what's also crazy is like i don't know why this happened but there's also been like a, a bit of a surge in player base this tier like yeah, there's more people playing retail yeah. than the, the, like like probably this almost equivalent if not, not more rating but they're not mythic rating well exactly yeah and that's people the problem like it's now. it's yeah. yeah like there's there's 3100 laridar kills and 3300 nine way kills and there's 700 fire at kills and it's also i think a big issue for them with like retaining players in the long run like it, people are just gonna it is so much commitment compared to any other game that exists to mythic raid because of like the demands it has in terms of scheduling and stuff and if you make like the reward it's like anything in life like you're just doing is it worth the time you're investing in it and i think continually as like the older player base who has always played wow it's just like okay it's just not i can't do it anymore it's just not really worth the time and stuff it, you just like the player base will just totally die for it. it just needs to be more accessible i think just flat out mythic raid needs to be way more accessible than it is now and uh, and to touch on something you said earlier, Sindul, where you were like, you know, PvP will, um, you know, generate like natural, like competition or whatever, and this is like PvE. It's also like group PvE. So like you're making this difficult thing, like if it was a one-player game and you're making it difficult, like okay, like I can progress on that on my own, like I can figure things out and how to accomplish it. But like I'm figuring it out, and then I'm waiting for like 19 other people to fucking figure it out. It's just like not fun, you know. What? So, so the one thing I wanted, yep. I, touching on that, John, the one thing I wanted to talk about with you guys, because I'm curious what your take on this is, because I think it's actually, like, not to get, like, whatever about, like, you know, to, you know, I don't know, Zen or something, but, like, what do, what do you do this for? Like, what is the point? Like, what do you want out of this, right? Like, that, to me, is, like, such an important question. It kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about, like, the four tiers, but, like, for us, like, what do we want? Like, I can tell you what I want, like, what I like, like, I like Cummings. I think it's at this point now, like where maybe I was different five years ago, maybe it was different 10 years ago, but like, what do I like doing when I come to play the game? I like having fun with people that I like having fun with and like, it's fun and enjoyable to do this stuff together. You know, we talk crap and have a good time. And sometimes every once in a while, I get to have fun in the game and the rate and talking about rating, like where I get to have agency mm -hmm. and the bosses yeah. are awesome. But a lot of times, to be honest, it's not that much fun. The actual thing itself, because it's frustrating. It's all already pre-scripted and it's just following a script or it's like, um, we're dealing with crap that we can't control, like people not showing up or have attendance issues or weak auras or macros or whatever the hell we're dealing with. But like, if from my perspective, like, do I really care if we finish 600 versus 800 as our rank? Not really. I mean, does it feel better to do better? Of course. But like, do I really care in the end? No. Do I care more about like how much time I spend? Yes. <laughs> you know, how much time I spend where yeah. like it's, it's starting, people are unhappy and it's not as much fun to do it then of course I care. I'm, I'm doing this for fun. Like I don't, it's not going to change my life whether I get 600 versus 800 in, in the rank. And like, I frankly think like our guild is maybe different in that regard because we don't have a bunch of people that are using our guilds as stepping stone. A lot of guilds in our rank area, people are using those guilds as stepping stones because they want to get better and go to bigger guilds and better guilds. And like, that's very normal. And there's nothing really wrong with that. We are not like that. And so it kind of puts us in a different perspective. I think whether or not people care a lot or not, um are different mm -hmm. opinions and you guys could talk about what you think compared to me but like 
from my perspective, I just want to have fun and be done and then have more fun doing other things or reclearing or whatever, an easier level or just, you know, playing alts or whatever with people that I want to play with. Cause that's what I'm spending my nighttime doing when I could be doing a million other things. So, mm-hmm. you know, whatever takes away from that, whether it's like people being irritated with the game, cause things are taking too long. Like that's a negative to me. Um, but everyone has different takes on this and that's part of the problem. I mean, that's just part of the problem with having such a huge multiplayer game in any ways, everyone's going to have different interests or different like things yep. they want to be yeah. doing. But I'm curious what you guys, like what, what do you get out of this? Like, what does it mean to you? Like what, I think it's just helpful to calibrate like what you want. Cause I think that plays a lot into how you want it to be, like what you want to change. Cause it'll cater more towards what you want. If that makes sense. Yeah. You can go, John. Um, There's just this feeling when you kill an M boss. Uh, there's just nothing like it. I don't know. You just feel so good, man. Like all the. It's, I don't know if it's just for me or like every other people for like this, but since I like run the guild, it's like, God, finally, like four months later, after all the freaking work I put in, after all this shit we went through, it's like you know we finally came to the end of the line and killed it. I, I for me, that's like the biggest like good feeling. Uh, that's like one of the main reasons I do it. Um, and then the other part is like you said that like I like getting on and having you know shooting the shit with my with the boys raiding. It's like you know the best part of playing the game is is raiding with with your friends. Um, and I agree with what you said. Like our guild is different, and I think this kind of puts me in like a bit of a hard spot where it's like yeah, like nobody kind of like really leaves the guild um, unless they like quit the game, and we don't really really replace people either, which kind of like leads into another thought i have where uh, probably the third reason i play like i just want to i want to get better like i want to I, I play for like a uh, what's the word i'm looking for competitiveness i guess but it's like pve so i don't really know but it's like i want to like improve my logs i want to like improve our raid rankings like every time i want to play i just like want to like if i'm raiding like i want to just do better and play better and kind of going back to what you said like we don't replace people i don't know if that's like hard for us to improve anymore because like we don't really replace people what are your what are your thoughts on that Beth? i mean again like it's just i mean i think we you and i probably diverge a little bit there and that i don't i kind of think it is what it is like as i've said yeah. a million times like what kind of you know we always are, are our favorite guild is <laughs> what kind of guild are we trying to be but like in the end like you know it it, it, it it's true because yeah, you could go and replace people. I mean, you could replace me or whoever in the guild and probably get better players. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't. You'd lose a lot of what the guild is and maybe your rank would go up right. two yep. or 300 ranks. Maybe yep. it wouldn't. And maybe the guild would fall apart because you'd lose the fun and so no yep. one would want to play. So we're just quitting the guild would die. But like, you know, I mean... It's a rock and a hard spot for sure. Right, right. I mean, you could make limited changes. You could also just like shift people around. You could ask more from people. Um, you could, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you could you could theoretically do. But like... Are you, is it really worth it? I guess is the, it's like, it's like prioritizing. Like if you yeah. really want to, you may, and maybe you can find your own satisfaction. If you, John, you know, want to be better and whatever that means, like you can do that for yourself in some way, like set goals for yourself as a raid leader or as like an individual, like having your secret account that you don't tell anyone about <laughs> what you do on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, I mean, you could, I'm, I'm joking, but like whatever it is, like you could, um, you could set goals like through that competitiveness. Because for me, like, I'm I'm like it's funny like I'm not I'm I'm saying that that part doesn't matter as much to me but I guarantee you like in real life like I'm as competitive as anyone in this guild like I mean I'm competitive for, like I do combative things for a living as a lawyer like yeah. I'm really fighting people so like and I get very, you can mm-hmm. talk to people I get very like animated about it and really in, like I'm pretty hardcore about like how I feel about stuff so anyway my point is is to say like this is more fun for me but I am competitive enough that like I like to do well I like to succeed um I guess I just don't, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a, it, because maybe because it's a group thing. Like, I just doesn't hit me as much anymore. Maybe I'm just older now. Like, I get pissed off when I, like, wipe us and stuff. Like, I actually really do. And you guys know that. But, like, and I get really excited when I do things really well. But, I mean, to be completely honest with you, I definitely yelled louder and, like, pounded and said, let's fucking go when I got that first in Plunderstorm when I <laughs> figured, out, figured out how to do it, like, earlier this week because I, like, hid for a while and then stayed on top of the towers and snuck in and killed some guy at the last minute because I feel like I gamed the system and got a win even though I suck at it. I was way louder and more aiming for that than I was for a fair rock kill. I'm just being honest. So, like, what does that say? I mean, I'm just being, you know, I'm yeah. being blunt about uh, it. I like, don't know. Maybe I just have, like, a different opinion because, like, I'm the guild leader, like... Yeah, I don't know, fair enough. Maybe. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel I, I feel like my 
out of everyone in the guild, I feel like I I have different and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but like I think I feel like I want different things from the guilds than what other than what other people do, but like I would never like abandon the guild. Like I could never like, you know, be like, sorry boys, like our goals just aren't lining up. I'm just gonna join a different guild and you guys are shit out of luck, you know, as long as like as long as the boys are around and you know everybody wants the game, that's you know I, I that's I really look forward to to doing that with everyone too. So it's it's hard for me yeah, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I think if I was very introspective about it, it's the I. So it's kind of a cliche thing to say, but every game I play, I basically play it because not even necessarily that I like the game as it is, but I I really enjoy the sense of uh, like skill progression and getting mm-hmm. better a lot and that's why like when i don't play while i'm always playing like some form of like a player versus player game because i really enjoy uh i I jokingly say a lot i just really enjoy being better than other people at the games i play but really it's just like the drive of it's just like getting better and seeing yourself get better well for sure and wow it's the only reason i've at any game i've played in the last 10 years of my life i'm always very seasonal like i'll play it till a certain point and some reason i just lose attention span for it and then i'll switch to something else but wow is the only game i've consistently played for the last three or however long i've been in the guild yeah and it's definitely just because of like the community and the unique environment we have in our guild which is obviously really important like that said like we don't really have problems retaining players if we have a situation like where everyone quits and stuff it's one thing but when we're consistently rating we're keeping the same core of people because everyone enjoys the unique environment and the personalities we have here so it has to be barred on like if i played wow how i play any other game i would probably only play like every other tier but the frustrating thing about being in a guild like ours is i still really do enjoy getting better and trying to do the best i can on boss fights and i also really enjoy understanding like what my spec is good at and trying to perform that to the, the highest extent possible um, that I can within my capabilities. And with WoW, since you're playing with 19 other people, your ability to improve and kind of showcase your own individual skill is obviously always gated by the other 19 people you're in a group with. Um, so that's definitely a balancing act like you have to deal with. But ultimately, I definitely... The, the thing I value the most about our guild and the most important part, I think, is just the community that we have and built. And it's been like by far the most unique gaming experience that I've had. And that's what uh, that's why people play this game. I think is because you have the community of people you're with that you really enjoy, and it's just an opportunity for you to kind of just have you know this set amount of time a week where you're just with these 19 other people who you have fun with, and it gets frustrating, but it, it's ultimately worth it at the end when you kill the last boss. Yeah, it just feels. And there's good. like it is so true. Like there's no other getting to the last like three percent of the boss the final boss is hearts fucking the, yeah shit, it's like the most yeah. ad, the adrenaline inducing experience this game has i don't think even like the second to last That's boss true. i think it's cool but like there's always another thing you have to do so it's like that feeling of relief and mm-hmm. like the gratification you get from killing the end boss and then it also comes with your permanent end rate you get it like i don't know how much i actually care about that either i just more get frustrated that i feel like we could be so much better and the way we progress is annoying to me and it's not it's just like i just wish it I wish it actually felt like we were progging more than it does. Like a lot of times it feels like we're just waiting for the next mistake and we're not having this like fun, like, oh, we're getting better. Like the, we were yeah. messing this up, but we figured it out. It's like, no, that's going to get messed up again in, in, in an hour. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, so it's a balance, but still by far the most fun like community of people I've been in. Yeah. I, I agree with video all, games go. I agree with all that. I mean, I think the only thing I'll say is that, and for better, or for worse, at least from my perspective is I think, if you think about it for a minute the reason why you get frustrated while we're not doing better is because you probably feel a little bit like well people are either not putting the time in that i'm putting in the effort they're not i mean maybe you guys feel so not as good as i am um they're not here they're taking vacation like i look at that i'm like well you know i'm i, I have a lot going on in my life and i make sure i'm here every night when yeah, i have yeah. and so like that's that's frustrating because you realize oh well, we're not going to do as well because some person had a miss which is maybe totally legitimate because they had something serious happen in their life or they had a planned vacation they planned for a long time like that's fine yeah but you take the time and effort and I know john you probably feel this more than anyone because you put the most effort yeah in, of course. i was gonna get back to that yeah yeah so i mean you could talk about that from your perspective well, but like that that you know i mean it's hard not to be frustrated sometimes that's what i'm saying like i, I feel like the reason i care about rank so much it's like uh like i'm putting all this effort in and it's like why are we just not like jumping up the ranks you know like that's the most frustrating part to me like i'm putting this i'm putting more effort in each tier and our ranks aren't like uh, matching the effort i'm putting in i feel like 
Yeah, exactly. Like, like I've said, like our progression curve, and not even if you just talk about bosses, but like our ranking progression is just weird. Like, why do we go from, you know, we were what Castle Matthews, whatever, like fourteen hundred yeah. or whatever it was, and then you go to we try three day, and we still don't even get that much better. And then we randomly have like a fluke tier. It's probably just, but honestly, the only reason we did good in Sepulchre is because of who we are as a guild, like our community. Yep. Like yep. We, we stuck through it all, and it was just fun the whole time too, because no one had expectations of rank or anything. And then Vault comes around, and we do even, like we do better. I just think we have better players overall across the board. But like, what, what happens from there to now? Like, I wouldn't really say that in Vault we were significantly better skill wise than Abaris, but we go up 200 ranks. And then this year, I'd say we're one of the best rosters we've ever had, but we still can't beat Vault. And you, you know, three day, whatever, blah blah blah. But yeah. I, I agree, it's like frustrating that it feels like we're doing the things we need to do, like preps getting better, we're getting better players, but it's just not reflecting on our rank. And that's what's like so frustrating. It's like, how do you, and I'm not saying this like rhetorically, like I actually, at, at some point, it's like, how do you actually improve? Know, like what else like, can you do? You, I'm looking at like, you look at other guilds ranks, like when they, like uh, Nathria, like world rank 2000, uh, Sanctum, like world rank, like 1200, Sophos, 800, and it's like 500, 400, 350. It's like, they're going every tier where ours is yeah, like- Yeah, compare the rosters, man. I would, I would compare the rosters. See how much the see if it's the they same prob- player. Yeah, they probably do cycle through a lot of people and just like, you know, yeah. are jumping at the bit to grab whoever is clearly an upgrade. Uh, what do we have? Our, our roster from Nathria to, to this raid is what? Probably have 10 same people? It's probably not as many as I think, but like... Well, that's the only 10 people that matters <clears throat> then, buddy. Well, I'm just saying, like, I'm, what's the same? What's the same? I mean, like, I would, I would be interested to see what the overlap is. So, like, that would tell you a lot, well, I think. And also think about, like, I'm, I'll just throw him under the bus a bit. Like, if you look at someone like Tuggo, uh, <laughs> who in the last <laughs> three bosses, talks, literally, right? it's 8, 23, 22, right? I, a row could apply who had like all hundreds. I still wouldn't replace them. I wouldn't replace Tuggo with them though, because it's it, it's so important to have people like that in the guild to keep things moving, right? And so even if you wanted to get nitpicking, you're like, well, what if we just you know replace this person with whoever applied? Like we got the most crazy rogue player. Like yeah. for one, it's probably someone who's just climbing the ladder and you have to deal with that fallout later. Also, like you're losing what makes the guild the guild, and mm-hmm. but it comes hand in hand with like like the actual literal question of how do you improve? Cause I feel like we've done a lot to do it or tried and we even have gotten rid of some people who are just, you know, maybe they get benched more, whatever it could be to get people who are clearly better than what we've had in the past, but it just doesn't, there is no one-to-one correlation for us. Like we just bounce around just like our boss progression curves. Yeah. It's definitely frustrating for me at least, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I agree next year for sure yeah always always a rebound every tier is a rebound, rebound tier maybe well who knows yeah who knows what's gonna look like in the next expansion we, i mean we'll just have to see so. we, yeah. we we've been going for a while but i guess we can just quickly talk about season four and what what you want from it or what what do you what are your plans in terms of you're gonna do in season four death i feel like you're an interesting one what are you looking for and what do you think you're gonna do during season four i mean i really hope i really hope they do something different experimenting whether it's like no mythic lockout they're not going to do anything that crazy because I, I just know they won't but like no mythic lockout i don't think even they'll do something like that like flex mythic like they don't i don't think they'll do anything like that as much as i would like for them to try out something <clears throat> i i definitely think if they do some kind of awakened affix or whatever it should all be like good and should not be bad i think the raid should be super easy i think they should all be open all every week um if it's like it wasn't faded, I mean, I, I'm just, you know, I'm sure we're going to do the same kind of thing because it's like no one wants to reprog Razageth. I mean, it just no one's going to want to reprog Scarn. Echo of Neltharian, can you imagine? I mean, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yep. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why they think that's fun. Like, I understand they're just, it's a bonus tier, you know, in a sense, and I get that. And, like, the Mythic Plus season may be a lot of fun. Like, it was... Um, and faded. That was the best mythic mythic plus season they've had in a long time. <laughs> Still, yeah. But yep, right. It was awesome. But like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. My expectations are very low. So I just like for them to experiment because I think it gives them windows into how they do things in the future. So I, even if it's terrible, if they experiment, then that's fine with me. If they don't experiment and it's terrible, then it's like lazy, and I'm like, just don't do it next time. Just leave us here. I don't think they're. We'll ever just stop raiding. Yeah. I don't you know, think, I mean, well, just, yeah. They said they're gonna do shorter release expansions, so I I just don't yeah. see them doing faded again. It's our, it's not even out yet, and it's just receiving so much like negative people yeah. just shitting on it. Constantly. Right. 
And as I said, the easiest thing they could do, all they have to do is bring back an old raid. That's mm -hmm. all they have to do. Bring back an old raid and scale it up and just don't do anything and just let people have fun. That's all they have to do and everyone would love it. Bring back Throne of Thunder. Scale it up. Give these two difficulties. Make them like basically normal and heroic now. Make them, you can make them a little harder if you want. Don't do anything else and people would have a blast. It'd be so much fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's a layup. It's a layup. I don't know why they don't do it. Like, that's true. You don't, I agree. You don't need to like change the mechanics, really. Like they've done this for time walking. It's not hard. Like you, you Firelands time walking. Yep. You could do Throne of Thunder. Like it's really not a big deal. You could even just do Firelands. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. Let people have fun with an old raid that maybe they never did it before and make it like make it actually the real difficulty. I don't know. It's such it's such an easy one. Like it's such an easy one. I don't know why they don't see it. Like no one wants to do these raids again. <laughs> from this expansion no one wants honestly that. they should do like the the in quote fix or whatever your enlightened whatever should just be like every like everyone gets a cheat death this fight or something like they should just do stuff cool. that makes yeah. it way easier or just yeah sure. or it should be tuned to the point the old one shot mechanics just aren't old one shot mechanics and stuff yes. like it just that that kind of stuff that it, you should get honestly you should just get like some form of power up on each fight Dude, yeah. the fights cool. the fights now, are just too hard it's like we have to do razzing it again now I gotta make this whole fucking Google sheet for red side and blue side and all these fucking pre predetermined assignments of where you're standing so yep. we fucking AOE the things perfectly. It's like it's just too much like for reclear. Like I, I think uh the best reclear tier this uh expansion was um the uh, Avarice. Like I you didn't you didn't need a sheet for anything until like Echo of Neltharion. You'd kinda of didn't even really need that to be honest with you. You just need to like assign the portals. Yup. And they I'm... also should just hold the L and make every private aura like a normal aura again. So, because I I still don't get the whole private aura thing because it'd be one yeah. thing if weak ours were inaccessible, but the world first guilds or someone else, the top guild releases their weak aura to deal with the mechanic every yeah. single time. So like just accept that private aura's were stupid and you should just make mechanics where people don't even need to think about making crazy weak auras. And then you, if you do that, you can limit the functionality of weak auras too in the same vein. But don't make mechanics that are only solvable with weak auras and then make it a, a, something that's impossible to make a weak aura for. Like, it makes no I, sense. I hate to burst your bubble. We're not going to get any like specific tuning probably. Like they're not going to go through and pick out because it's just it's like two people doing the tier. So like the problem is, is they're not going to go back and do that. They're not going to go back and change the way the fights work. That's why they have to give a blanket like buff or something to make this doable. Like they have, if they want to keep these fights and or raids and do them again, they need to give people power or an affix that's solely very powerful that makes them way easier because they're not yeah. going to go back and tune them. They just don't well, have the manpower, and that's yeah. fine. But like, if you're going to bring them back, strong, you better man. make them easier. Yeah. You better make them easier. And if you don't, no one's going to do it because people hated it last time. There's going to be like, no one is going to want to. It just, it just, it's just, no one's going to do it, and it's a waste of everyone's time. Like, why even bother? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they could just go flip the flag that says private aura to normal no, weak aura. No, man. I'm telling you, because it'll break something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get I don't even... Yeah, whatever. But well, yeah, they, that, they that changed just... the Neltharian one. Like, you can't use the map anymore, and then they nerfed the fight. So, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. I, I'm, I'm not up to, I'm not very I'm not optimistic. Either. Like I said, my expectations are Or just, like, they well. could just reduce the... Like, literally change the amount of Molten Hearts or whatever it's called you get to, like, three. So you can't they, just, like, YOLO just, run they around with it. They just dropped it to four. They just need to drop yeah. the radius of it now. And it probably won't but be But did they bad. change Dathia? Did they change Razageth? I mean... Well, Dathia is easy. You can just do the one platform thing. I guess. Yeah, I, guess. I mean, Razageth... You know my point. Yeah, I know. Razageth's weight, like, just way too much to sign. I felt the same way about last expansion. Like... Sire, you had to like make the the phase one, uh, like sheet of like who's soaking when, uh, you know. I smolder like, yeah. on? I mean, smolder on? I mean, <laughs> smolder on's you know, good. You, I still think, yeah. you need a macro though. You still need a macro. Yeah, yeah. In the fight. Yeah, they need to change that. Yeah, but uh, they, yeah, private hour things just never exist. It is just so crazy to me that every single time they do it, it's just the only situation where you're like, I wish I had a weak aura for this. Like it, it, the only time they make something private is when it's the only mechanic in the fight. Where you're like this this is such a so a complicated enough mechanic to the point the only thing that's holding back is like easy coordination between players which is just a weak r that tells you at least your assignment i don't get why they make mechanics like that if they want to not let you use the functionality everyone's used to and it's only those mechanics like it's mm -hmm. just just don't make mechanics that you need a weak r for yep. like private r's should not be a thing because they shouldn't need to exist in the first place yep i agree um, no, I agree with Death on season four. Like they, they need to experiment. Probably won't. They just need to make the shit easier. No one's gonna play. And I don't know. It seems like War Within is gonna release later than I'm expecting. I expected it to. Mm -hmm. So 
I think in the summer. It's going to come out the end of August. But like the problem is going to be if in War Within the raids they don't change anything. As I've said, like if it's really the same as it is now, people are going to. It's just it's they got to do something. Make it make yeah. raids flex. Make them sixteen man if you want to keep the same number. Get rid of mythic lockout. Is an that's an easy one. Easy one. Um, I'll never do that. I don't think. Uh, it's an easy one. I mean, the other stuff's way more destructive to guilds to like reduce the raid size. Yeah, and make it flex. yeah. Yeah. Also, like, like no, it's the same thing. Who cares if people can get boosted easier in, in Mythic? Like, you, you can tell by looking at someone's logs if they like are legit or not. And no one cares if you have CE if like it, you didn't get it yourself and you don't have like the logs to back for it. Like, wh why not make Mythic? I mean, I, have I, a, none like, of that shit no matters lockout. at all to me. Like, who gives a? I mean, I don't. That's what I'm saying. Care. Like, yeah, I, I just the, care. the Mythic lockout is still so dated. Like, I don't get why it's still a thing. Yeah. So much more people would be willing to do it if you didn't could only do it with the set twenty people. If you weren't on a raid ID, like I feel like way yeah. more people would be willing to at least try make it. A oh, yeah, I mean that would be like that would go back to your Legion thing where they're just like way more pugs all the time because people would actually be yeah. pugging mythic and shit. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you could go back just to do the boss game for fun if you were bored. Like that'd be oh, cool. Dude, I'd, I'd love just, to be able to yeah, do you that. Just like farm logs with like other guilds and stuff. As, yeah, as cool. always, any change that makes the game more fun is a good change. And I don't. It doesn't really like they don't need to worry about the. It's this is a twenty year old multiplayer game that a bunch of old people play and some younger people. Like just make it fun for people. Like it doesn't matter. Like who cares? Who cares? Yep. I mean, I'm just to be honest. Like, it really doesn't matter your achievements. Though, like, I don't get achievements so I can like lord them over people. I get achievements because it's like I've, I'm like autistic and want to get all the achievements. Yeah. Like, as literally, I don't care but, if someone else has all the achievements. No, you, and get I the, don't. you get the achievements. It's meaningless. So it's when somebody else posts that the guy, you're like, eh, it took you that long, huh? That's why you well, get them. Maybe that's a, that's a joke. But like, yes, I mean, in reality though, it's just because I'm like obsessive about it. It's not like about competing with yeah, someone else in my course. for me at least. Like, I just don't care. Like it's funny. Like it's funny to say I have more mounts than everyone else. I think that's. I think I love to say it because it's just funny. But like I don't actually care. <laughs> I mean I don't actually care. Like that you have half the amounts I have. Half the amounts I have, John. Like who? Wh what? <laughs> or like someone else has literally twenty more mounts than me or something. Like I mean, it's not a race. I don't. I mean maybe to some people it is. I don't know. Maybe some people care like that. I don't. Just make but. it more accessible, man. That's all I need to do. Make it easier and more accessible. Because Sindul is right. The game will die eventually. It just will. I mean, that's why everyone in our guilds, no one's getting any younger. Yeah, and younger people wow. just play the, the the hip, cool, seasonal game. Every game is seasonal now. You could argue WoW is with tiers, but it's like the commitment you have to put in is, is too high and such. So if it's not get, accessible, yeah, get it's highest, never going to attract right? younger yeah. people. Yeah. Like It just won't unless they make it. They find a way to change the ecosystem of what makes the game fun and how easy it is to access the, in quote, hardest content. Like You're just not going to get new players and... Everyone's gonna get to an age where it's like I don't think I can put up with yeah you know I mean delicious screaming thing. about something anymore or something you know like it's just too <laughs> much you're just getting too old or you have too many responsibilities for it and it's just not worth the investment anymore. I mean I will say one thing we didn't talk about you guys want to talk about Plunderstorm or no? We can't. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. So I mean. I'm it's interesting the lessons from that, right? Like, it's interesting what lessons they could take away from that because they could go in a lot of different directions with it. So, I mean, the lesson to not take from it is the Asmongold stuff. Like, don't take that lesson. <laughs> but, like, the 10 spells and, like, I mean, I agree that they're, they're, they're teetering on bloat now. Like, they have too many. I agree. With, I do agree with that. Depends but I don't think class, it needs to be. Yeah. That is true. That is very true. It, I don't, I think, I don't, so it needs to be in a class by class basis. I think the add on point is fair to, a, to an extent, but I also think add ons are what people, I think, I think if you removed add-ons from WoW, like it's a bad. I think it's generally a bad idea because I think add-ons are kind of what make WoW. Like they've we've always had add-ons since the very beginning of the game. It's like just a part of the game. I yep. agree. You can't you can't take them out, right? But you could make it so you don't need them for certain things, like for sure. And they've done a lot with that, by the way, with the the base stuff. I like, think that's great. I'm glad they did that. Like I don't use that, but like that's great for other people. Mm -hmm. But like the lesson from Plunderstorm is that it's the it's the plug and play. It's the accessibility. It's not even the PvP part because a lot of people hate that, and that's fine. But like, it's the fact that you can jump in and just do it, and it's it's not hard, you know. And to some extent, you can even an idiot like me can win if I do the right strategy every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fun and it's quick and it's all it's short, it's quick, and it's also going to be it's done. Like the matches, even if you wake to the end, it's what ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Yeah. Like again, you just plug and play. You don't you to come on and get with a friend. There are two of you, and you can do duos. Like they they were going to do trios. I think it was in the yeah, files no, or whatever. Yep, they didn't yep, do that. Yep. Right. And so, like, maybe you could expand something like this to more people, but, like, you know, a few more people. But 
they hit on some really important things there. And that's why it's a lot of fun for a lot of people. And the people that it's not fun for are the people that are like, just don't like not competitive who just want to go off and do their own thing in the game. And there's definitely a market for that. I respect that. I mean, I like to collect stuff. I get it. But like the competitive people who play the game competitively have a lot of fun with this mode. And there's that's, and that should tell them something that like pretty much every mythic raider, I think probably has fun doing this. Maybe not every single one, but the vast majority do. And that should tell them something that those people still find this really, really fun. It means a lot. And like, we'll see. I mean, if you get the max rewards and you're still playing it, you know, for the next few weeks, like yeah. that should also say something. So we'll see, but I'm just saying, I think there's a lot to learn from it. And I think, uh, sorry, I think uh, just to add to your point, like it's plug and play, like I think that's why a lot more people like that play the game, just there's more Mythic Plus players than Mythic Raiders because it's just like, you can just hop on and like plug a key real quick. It's like 20, 30 minutes at most, or, you you know, you can just link up with five friends like, oh, you guys going to be on like tomorrow at eight? We can just like do a key or two. It's just like, you know, you don't have to like sit around and commit six hours of your your life every week uh on two different days like where you're like you can't make plans or anything for 19 other people so it's just yeah just adding on to that yeah it's the accessibility of it's super fun i also, i do wonder like what, what do you even translate from plunder storm like the battle royale into anything you could do with the real game like i, I just don't know i think it's like really cool it's done independent game mode and it's cool it has connections back to retail for you know mounts and transmogs or whatever um, but I don't really know. I don't. Where, I mean, where, where could they even go with that, though, from an actual like, gameplay perspective? Like, how do you incorporate that more into <laughs> retail? Wow. Well, I mean, my comment always was just get rid of PvP and make this PvP. Like, don't the exact same game mode. Honestly, make PvP, yeah. Make PvP. Yeah, make PvP these kinds of abilities, like the level. Like, just make it like this level of of like, plug and play accessibility. Make all PvP like this. Just keep the same modes and maps and whatever, but just make the abilities, and the no week. Let's make it accessible because P- PvP is a disaster. It should have nothing to do with the main game. It should be a completely separate game mode, just like this is. Yeah. And you can expand this and make you it PvP. Just, just can it. Just can it. No one cares. Like, just really, no one cares anymore. Like, really, no one cares about PvP. It's already a mess. It's a, com- it's a complete disaster. Like, I don't know. I haven't... I like to get do my transmog thing, as, as, I, as everyone knows. But I didn't even do it this this tier or last tier because the solo shuffle queues are so long. And if you don't do solo shuffle, it's just people boosting. It's just a disaster. I mean, maybe the rated battlegrounds will be fun next expansion when there's like the rated battleground queue, solo queue. Like that's interesting to me. Like maybe that'll be fun. Maybe it won't. Maybe we'll have the same problems as solo shuffle where there's healers. And it, it's also another another whole other thing that like tanks can't even do it. Like that's also ridiculous. Anyway, the point is, I'm gonna just spend too long on this, but like. Just make this the PvP mode. If PvP would be so much more popular. Think about it. You could have battle royale tournaments at a million. Like it just, I don't know. I feel like it'd be so much more fun. Or even it's just a skill express. It's a pure skill expression if you put it in the regular PvP. I don't know. That's uh, my take. I think yeah, they. Yeah. I think they That's can a hot take. Like, Very hot take. But they can like test abilities with it too. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, they can. Well, I just think WoW PvP just became it, just MMOs. I just never think are set up for actual PvP to be balanced or good because you will always have to deal with the conflict between PvE tuning and PvP tuning. And, like, they have independent knobs, of course, but I just don't... You can't design MMO classes for PvE and PvP. And, like, WoW is clearly... The premier content in World of Warcraft is the PvE. And they keep PvP because it was, like, cool. Back in the day, it was, like, a much more innocent... You just do battlegrounds. And even when Arena was first introduced, like, you didn't have access to all these resources and stuff... All of the knowledge like increase, I think, has just been a straight gain for PVE because there's no barriers to knowledge where like you just won't even know how to play your class because you don't have access to it. But PvP it's like they just can't really tune the game for both. And I think most people agree that like arena is just not fun and it hasn't been fun in a really long time. It's just it can be fun to do. Like I've had fun doing it with both of you when we like play twos and stuff to get to the transmog rating. Like that's fun as a one off thing. But I why would I I just can't in my head justify why I would ever play WoW PvP over any other game whose focus is player versus mm-hmm. player mm-hmm. combat. Like, or just like the whole game is designed to be a player versus player game. I, I don't know. I, I think and that's honestly a good idea. Like, just revamping how PvP works in WoW would be, could just add a, yeah, if it was be, actually fun, would I would cool. do it. Cause yeah. I, I've had a ton of fun playing Punisher. Obviously, like, I've been like level 40 for like three days or whatever, four days. And I got it super quick and I have a great time winning. I have a lot of fun like trying to win and, kill people and that's what's fun about it like i don't do it i mean i happen to get the transmog and mouse and stuff i didn't even care about that though but that's what i'm saying is that like to my point is that even people that are pve only who don't pvp 
are having a lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I totally mm-hmm. agree. Yeah. I agree. And I mean, I think it's fun, but it's not like that fun. Well, I'm just saying, like, clearly, it struck a nerve with people that are that like to play the game, and like that should tell them something that even people who are very high level players who have very sophisticated weak R's and action bars and are really good at playing a class with a million buttons still love this. That that really says something about the combat, which you know, not to beat a dead horse, but like the strength of WoW is its combat. Like it's yeah. the best. Oh, combat. absolutely. Like, yeah. And like that's why that's so much fun. It's because the combat is so good in WoW. Like it's so much better than any other MMO. And so like. The, the more they can lean into that, the better. But anyway. Yeah. I um, totally agree. I hope they do do something with it or keep expanding on it somehow to make it have replayability. Because I, I do enjoy doing it as its own one-off mode. I think it'd be cool if they kept it and just, like, you could keep getting, like, transmog and cosmetic rewards for mm. doing it. You'd have to add, like, a, a ranked version of it. That'd be cool. I think I think it would. I do, I do think it would get old, but I think there's a lot of ways they can do it in different settings with different abilities and different ways. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, like add lot, maps and stuff, new room. abilities. Yeah. Battlegrounds. But keep giving people yeah. a reason to play it that, like, ties back into the real game. So basically, yeah, yeah I mean, like, what you're saying, like, it could, it can eventually take place of PvP in a lot of, like, like think that, if that'd you're be doing, way more like, fun to me. Yeah, I think if you're doing, like, you know, Arathi Basin, but you get, you start off with 10v10 Thunderstorm abilities, like, you know, Mm-hmm. And you like when you got power ups in Rathy, you know what yeah, I mean? Just, like, I think it'd cool. be so much yeah. fun. Wouldn't yep. that be awesome? That I feel like it'd be awesome. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome too. Would we absolutely. do it? We would all do it as a guild. Like, we would all just get a 10. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really infinitely, yeah. infinitely <laughs> times more fun than how PvP combat works now. Right. Yeah. So, without like, a doubt, that, that should be very obvious to them if they have any, if they're paying attention at all. Like, the fact that we would say that and be like, holy shit, that sounds amazing to go do a 10v10 battleground as a plunderstorm, like the same abilities and everything, and like the same play but as a group like a team like that should say a lot to them yeah anyway. i agree i agree yeah totally agree um all right uh we've been going on for a little while here any anything else in the or no i think that just about covers it thanks for coming on though death it was fun yeah, having man. having you and all your unique fun perspectives i hope i i feel like i didn't have enough hot takes but maybe i got maybe i got enough out there for people i feel like my hot takes are pretty lukewarm at this point yeah that's pretty so tame Sorry. It's all right, man. Oh, I liked it. Just make me look like a liar. <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh well. Always next time. Always next. Hey, hey, you never know what they're gonna do in the war within, man. Maybe I'll have some like crazy more hot takes because they did some crazy ass shit. Stupid shit. shit yeah. But. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's gonna do it for us here. Thanks again, everyone, for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Lenny. Thanks, Lenny. Thanks, Lenny. Bye.